everybody. Welcome to The Waldock Way. I'm Jessica. Today's video is going to be a day in the life and it is in collaboration with Chips and Salsa Homeschooling. So I will put their channel right here for you and I will leave a link to their direct video in the description box. We are trying to show a little bit of everything today. So I'm going to be showcasing how to homeschool or how I homeschool in elementary school. And they're going to be showing you how they homeschool middle school and high school. So you're gonna get kind of a little bit of everything in today's collaboration day in the life video. Now, if you are new here, if you're coming over from Chips and Salsa and you don't know, I'll go ahead and let you know, we homeschool an only child. So we are only homeschooling one kid. Me and my husband both work from home, so we're here full time with her. We do a lot of tag team homeschooling where one of us works while the other one homeschools. And we are night owls, so we have a very slow, late start to our day. We don't have schedules, we don't keep times. What we like to do instead is kind of have a rhythm or a routine to our day, and that looks a little bit like starting with our morning basket, having some table time where she does some independent schoolwork us coming together for some sort of unit study um, type of work, typically doing some sort of afternoon activity with either me, my husband, or all of us together. And then we like to end our homeschool time with something that we're all doing. So that could be a nature walk, it could be playing games, just kind of closing out our day all together. And so hopefully if everything goes according to plan, that is what you're going to see today. Weird but true human body. Seven seconds is how long it takes food to travel from your mouth to your stomach. That seems pretty fast. So if you were eating a cookie, seven seconds would be in your stomach. Yeah, that sounds pretty fast. I would maybe think ten seconds. Thank you. They were in the military. <laughs> That's how long it takes me. The way your dad eats, his must get to his stomach in like three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is interesting, Emily. Your pupils in your eyes get bigger when the when your math problems get harder. We'll have to investigate that. If math problems get harder, your pupils are going to get bigger. I wonder. We'll have to investigate it. They probably it. will. We'll have to investigate it. All right. A man's beard grows faster in the summer than in the winter. Did you know that, babe? No, I would think that it would be the other way around. Yeah. I mean, the... you wouldn't want to be furry during the summertime, but you would want to be furry during the wintertime. Well, maybe yeah. that's exactly why it grows that way, to annoy you. Yeah, to annoy because me? he'd be <laughs> hot doing really in the job. If He'd be hot in the summer. It, it would actually feel nice in the winter. Yeah? Yeah. You don't feel like you shave more in the summer than you do in the winter? No. About every five to ten seconds I'm shaving. <laughs> Been that way all my life. You're so funny. I know. I try. All right. Let's read about Clara Barton today. In 1833, when Clara Barton was 11, her brother David fell off the roof of the barn on her family's farm. He didn't break any bones, but he did get sick, and Clara decided to take care of him. She cleaned his wounds, changed his bandages, and brought him his meals. For two years, she almost never left his side. By the time David recovered, Clara was very good at nursing. Everything she had done to help her brother seemed to come naturally to her. So when dozens of children in Massachusetts came down with smallpox, Clara nursed them too. She knew that she might get smallpox, but that didn't stop her. The children needed her help. Over the course of her long, busy life, Clara Barton never stopped helping and healing people. She started schools for poor children, nursed wounded soldiers during the Civil War, and fought long and hard to bring the Red Cross to the United States. Under her leadership, the Red Cross won fame for its treatment for disaster victims and set new standards for public service. Barton also transformed the nursing profession, strengthened the women's movement, and inspired volunteer organizations all over the world. Once a shy, small-town girl, Clara Barton became a true force for change. She was a woman to be reckoned with. <clears throat> One, what is the scientific name for your windpipe? Your esophagus, your larynx, or your trachea? I'm going to work esophagus or trachea. I'm going to go with esophagus. Nope. It's your trachea. What? But close. I mean, you knew it was one or the other. Yep, your trachea. Now, if you use your esophagus instead of your trachea, what happens? You choke. Thank you very much. I'll yep. give you that for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy said you can have it. Yep. So, your trachea is your windpipe. Your esophagus is where your food goes down. Yeah. And if you swallow it wrong or liquid or whatever. You know how they say it went down the wrong pipe? It's mom's says. 
It, it's my turn. Okay. But you know how they say it went down the wrong pipe? That's, yes. That's literally what that means. It went down the wrong. Three. Ooh, okay. <sighs> this is great. There are more bacteria in your mouth than there are people in the world. True. True or false? True. That's disgusting, but it's true. True. More than six billion yeah, in your mouth. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. In there's your like, mouth, not mine. There's like no room up in there. <laughs> not in my mouth. Well, in they're your tiny. Mouth. Well, they're tiny. Emily <laughs> said they're tiny. They're, oh, they're having a party. Muscles. I'm going to bite you and give you some of mine. Uno. What muscle in the body does the most work in its lifetime? <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's a Yours would be your tongue. Mine would be my heart. <laughs> it's true. Mine is my gluteus maximus. <laughs> nice. That's your butt muscle. I sit on mine a lot. <laughs> okay, Ew. That was funny. That's All right, disgusting. so was I correct? Yes. <laughs> about the digestive system? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the human body needs food to survive. Food provides our body with energy and essential vitamins and minerals. To get what we need from food, our digestive system breaks down into substances that our organs and cells can use. The digestive system is made of many organs and parts of the body, including the esophagus, pancreas, stomach, liver, gallbladder, colon, appendix, intestines, and more. So here we'll flip this page to this beautiful diagram that your dad did. So you can see the tongue, the esophagus, your liver, your stomach, your pancreas, your small intestine, your large intestine. Okay. So how does it start? All right. Well, let's keep reading. The first stage of digestion is chewing. When we chew our food with our teeth, it breaks down into pieces we can swallow. The saliva in your mouth helps you digest your food too. Saliva has enzymes that can break down the food as you chew. Once the food is chewed, the human body moves on to the second stage, swallowing. Swallowing seems like a simple process, but there's actually a lot happening in your body during this stage of digestion. The tongue pushes the food to the back of the throat, then the muscles in your throat push the food down the esophagus, a long tube leading to your stomach. While the muscles in your esophagus are pushing the food down your stomach, a flap, the epiglottis, blocks the windpipe to stop the food from going the wrong way. The third stage of digestion happens in the stomach. Once your food is chewed and it reaches the stomach, enzymes begin to break it down even further. The food breaks down into proteins and other vitamins our body can use. The stomach also kills any harmful bacteria that's lurking in the food that can make you sick. Food stays in your stomach for about four hours before moving to the final stage of digestion. Now what's funny is just earlier today in our morning basket, we read that it took how many seconds from the food to go from your mouth to your stomach? Seven. So that means that stage one and stage two and stage three, so it goes through three stages in seven seconds. That's like crazy. That's crazy, right? But then it takes four hours for it to digest. Exactly, while it's in your stomach doing, yeah. <clears throat> so finally the food moves into your intestines and the small intestines liquid from the liver and pancreas work together to break the food down. The liver and pancreas have a really important role in the digestive system. They use bile and enzymes to break the food into tiny pieces your body can use. 
The food our body can use is absorbed through the blood. And after that, the food our bodies can't use moves through the large intestine and leaves your body as waste. So the large intestines suck up all the juice and nutrients and then boom, it turns into poop. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, so name one part of the human digestive system. So name one part of the system. One of the organs that's included in the digestive system. But I know a lot. Well, just tell me one. The esophagus. Okay. What is the epiglottis and what do, what role does it play? Hmm. Do you remember what it did? Isn't the epiglottis the thingy that holds, that covers it? Yep, it's the flap that blocks the windpipe from getting the food to go the wrong way. I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. Okay, how long does the food stay in the stomach? Four hours, Before right? it moves to the final stage, correct. And what happens to the food after it leaves the stomach? It goes into the small intestines. It moves into your intestines, yeah. Then it goes to your large intestines and it's poop. <laughs> well, it gets all the good stuff out of it first. But yes, yeah. that's the <laughs> basis of it. That's pretty much it. Okay, so I got some of our Usworm books out so that you could see some of them. Um, this one I think is the coolest because you're literally watching it go down the esophagus and then into the stomach where the acid juices help to break it down. And then you can see it going from the small into the large. And then here you can see it becoming, well, poop and on the bathroom. <laughs> okay. I just thought that was kind of cool because it gave you a really good view of somebody that was about your size. So you could see kind of the size of your organs. And then I looked at this one too. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and do your page. So the main purpose of the digestive system is what? Is to digest all of your all the food that you eat and get the nutrients. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and write that. The main purpose is to break down the food you eat and get the nutrients. Okay, Emily. We are going to learn about the digestive system. I know you've done quite a bit with Mama and me already, but this one we're actually going to do a experiment representing the how the stomach works and what it does. Okay? Uh, might even get messy. Well, we can hope anyway. Okay, so hands-on activity, and we're going to create a stomach, just like you said. The stomach has a very important job, which is to break down the food that you eat the process of breaking down the food so it can be used for the body is called digestion, which you already knew that. All right. So we have a Ziploc bag, permanent marker, we have some crackers, and we have some clear soda. And it's very simple. We already jumped the gun on this apparently and drew our stomach on the Ziploc. So let's see what that looks like. All right. So we have a Ziploc and we have what? represents the stomach. You want to go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to take some just basic crackers. And put them in the Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you don't need all of them. You only need a few. Like one or two. Mm -hmm. or three. No, we're, we'll put a couple in there. Like maybe three or four of them. Because yeah, you want to make an ooey gooey mess, right? Yeah. Alright, here we go. Okay. Okay. Now, We've added the crackers, so the stomach has two different ways of breaking down food. The first way is the physical action. The stomach moves and churns the food to break it down. Use your hands to move and churn the food inside the stomach or the Ziploc bag. So go ahead and close it. All right, use your hands like the muscle. Keep going. So basically, you're grinding up and digesting the food that way. Now, it says, in addition to the physically churning of the food to break it down, the stomach also uses chemicals. Which would help. <laughs> you think so? Because look at all the crackers. I only okay. have that much cracker dust. So to represent the acid inside our stomach that helps in the breakdown of the food, Which is we're going to pour a few ounces of a clear soda just to represent that, okay? Which is called stomach acid. Yeah, I don't want to wear it. 
Yeah, we're supposed to be using it for experiments. But if it gets messy, it's okay. Yeah. You ready? Go ahead. There's a few ounces. Okay, you see it bubbling like okay. acid? And now we close it? Yeah, close it up. Do and just... continue to churn. Okay. This, whoa, it's cold and it's starting to get easier. Oh, we got some air in there. Get the so air. you pour a few ounces in the Ziploc to represent the acids that do the job to help the body and look digest. At that. It's it's easier. And you continue to smash the uh, crackers in the stomach Ziploc bag, and you see how much the stomach can digest, the, how the stomach can digest the food, and help with help from the acid, which is represented by the soda. Which is actually making it so much easier to mush all that food up. All right. So how did the experiment go? This was one of our coolest experiments for human body. I like it. I like it. And you think that's a pretty good representation of how the body digests the food? Yeah. And do you understand it? Yes, sir. Awesome. Awesome. True or false, pee, like urine, was once used to help dye clothing. For some reason that sounds disgusting, but I think yes. True. The ura and pee helped dye clothes like the indigo color in blue jeans. Ew! Okay. I don't so you can move ahead one space. I don't want to wear blue jeans anymore. Would that be pee pee jeans? <laughs> Alright babe, choose any question. Do you want Let's see. scrapes and scabs? Yes, I'm going with scrapes, scrapes, and scabs. scrapes and scabs. Okay, what is impetigo? A card game, a skin infection, or an uneven heartbeat? Skin infection. That is correct. Impetigo is a contagious bacterial skin infection that spreads when kids share toys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get to move three spaces. Ooh, what? check me out. Not and cool. I am Buster Guts. One, two, three. All right, I'm going to choose blubber or bluff. I'm sorry, blubber or buff, because it's the only one you haven't picked yet, so. True or false? Like fingerprints, every person has a unique tongue print. Ah, uh, true. But the ink they use tastes awful. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, true. How many do I get to move? One. Stay with me. Okay. Thank you.